Hey guys, welcome back to the 30 day wedding photography crash course series. I am Josiah Blizzard and we are going to be talking about websites today. And I have two brave souls who have volunteered to have their websites critiqued. So that that'll be a little bit fun. Um, I want to talk about websites first. Um, I want to talk about websites, specifically my website and my friend Sarah's website as um, a, a basis for, for what to go on. Um, we are talking about wedding photography, so this is going to be based in uh, kind of the wedding photography industry rather than what a website might look like for commercial work or, um, or families or something along those lines, right? So we're going to talk about wedding photography and what I think a homepage or a about page or just a photography website, a wedding photography website in general needs to have in order to attract higher end clients and uh, really up your brand to the next level. This is not a branding talk necessarily, um, although there are some aspects to branding in here. Uh, if you are interested in branding, I would suggest hiring a um, designer for your website. That's something that we did. We have a custom made site. There is no other site in the world like our site. It is, com it is completely custom made. So I would suggest hiring a designer. If you can't hire a designer for your full site, I would at least hire a designer to figure out your brand colors, fonts, and maybe a logo. They don't necessarily have to design a site for you. Um, and then maybe I would suggest recommending, um, checking out Squarespace. This is not a sponsored video. I do not have enough followers for that at the time of recording. Uh, but Squarespace is a great place to start. They have really uh, clean templates um, and it's pretty easy to use and get get uh, get the hang of. Without further ado, let's dive on in. I know you guys are probably like, why is this guy babbling on? Um, okay, so the homepage. To me, the homepage needs a few different things. The first thing is a statement image. For us, it is this um, statement video. Um, what you're seeing in this video is us shooting. You're seeing some of our products and you're seeing uh, photos of our clients in those products. We also offer videography, so you're seeing some of the footage that we've shot at weddings. So this is the statement image on mobile, on a mobile device. It is just a single image at the top, um, a statement image of a bride's veil um, kind of flowing in the wind and it's a nice little little statement piece. Uh, so a statement image, you want to have a great first impression on your website and keep them reeled in. I think the stat was like, pe most people will leave your site in the first 10 seconds if they're not impressed. So you want to keep them around as long as possible. Scrolling down, every website needs to have a snippet about you. Okay. Just a little bit, just, we have two sentences here. Uh, and then we want to lead them to our about page. There's a call to action, the story of us. We want them to go and check out the about page where we have a whole lot more uh, story detail behind the scenes of who we are and what we do and why we do it. So have a little snippet of about you, including a picture of you um, and your business partner. If you are a duo, if you're a, a single, then just, just you up there. Uh, Next, after that, you want to link them to your work. Right now, I am linking to Ryan and Lauren's and Jim and Alyssa's wedding. See these weddings and they'll say, hey, this is beautifully shot. We want you guys to shoot our wedding. If you can make us look like these two, then that that's what we want. So we kind of link them to our blog page here. If I clicked on this, it would go, it would go to our blog. But you can see the entire wedding from front to back, all of our favorite images from that wedding on that blog page. Same with Jim and Alyssa's. And I've also linked them here to photography and videography. Then scrolling down a little bit more, uh, if you want to include a quick testimonial, you can. We decided not to. We wanted to funnel them over to our Get to Know Us page, um, which is where we, we want them to connect with us as people and book us because of who we are, not necessarily because of our images, right? So we want to get them to our About page. So there's a second call to action there. And then we have, you know, this free 30 day wedding photography crash course, which is what you guys are watching right now. Lastly, you can connect with us on Instagram. So that's essentially what our site looks like, our homepage. Let me go to my friend Sarah's site. Same thing, you have Sarah Canning where you're at, you have the navigation at the top, and then you actually have three statement images, which her work is so pretty. And this, these three images clearly represent her style, her brand, uh, light and airy, fine art, uh, wedding photographer. So you see the statement images here. You scroll down a little bit, you get a brief get to know you section. All right, you have a picture of Sarah, brief get to know you section. Scrolling down some more, we have the links to work. You can click here to see weddings. You can click here to see engagements. She has a brief testimonial here. And then these are also more links to view her work on the blog. 
and then she actually has a contact at the very bottom. So if you all you did was look at her homepage, you could contact her right off the homepage. So that's that's just another example. I wasn't planning on showing this. Let me pull up um, let me pull up another photographer in the area, and we'll see what she has, just so you guys can see the pattern here. All right, you have another statement image. You're on Vanessa Marie Photography's website. You have some links to her work here, galleries, contact, read the blog. You can see all of that. Meet Vanessa here. So she's she hasn't included a picture of herself, but she's included who she is a little bit. And you can click on this this button here to go meet her. Uh, she has some testimonials, more links to her work and blog images. So it's it's pretty much pretty much the same. These photographers are booked out year after year. Uh, they are close friends of ours and they are they are constantly working. So their websites are working for them. Um, your about page, let's jump over there and show you a little bit what I think an about page needs to have. The list is much shorter here for what an about page needs to have. I think all that really needs to be on this page is a longer version of your story of who you are. Uh, for us, we talk about how much we love movies, how we met, how our relationship was based around stories and movies and visuals and that sort of thing. And that bleeds into our, um, our photography, our filmmaking. It's an honor to document weddings in a way that regardless of how fast the day moves, no small detail is missed. So we're talking about being able to tell these stories and you're seeing people's stories flash on the screen here as well. You're seeing what it's like to work with us you're seeing our philosophy and our why. Honestly, these two things could move over to our photography page and not sit on our about page, but they work either way. Let's look at Sarah's site real quick and we'll go to her about page as well. All right, so you're meeting Sarah on her about page. Right off the bat, you're connecting with her. If you love Mexican food, you love Target, she loves Target. You love Disney, she loves Din Disney. She binges friends, we binge friends, like didn't realize she did that. So like next time I see her, I'm gonna have to talk about friends with her. She kills plants. Like she's saying things that we kind of all are like, right? She's 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 throwing out items and, and pieces of her personality to connect with her target audience that is hitting her website. And when all of these line up, you can bet that that client who is on her website is 100% going to reach out to her because they're saying in their heads, wow, she is just like me. So you're meeting her here and then you're getting this lovely about section, this much longer version of who she is, where she came from, how photography plays into her story. Uh, and then you get some fun facts. Mexican food's her favorite. She loves going to Target, kind of things that were repeated up here. Uh, she went to school for business and marketing at Penn State. Um, she loves to travel, like that sort of thing. And then you're seeing a bunch of her life, her with her boyfriend, her shooting behind the scenes, that sort of thing. Her clients happy looking at an image on the back of her camera. So you're getting you're getting a little bit more about her on her about page. That's what it's for. You want to you want to tease a little bit on the home page and then dive in on uh, the about page. Let's go and look at the photography page. Um, wedding photography on our site. We want to sell a lot more products. So we start showing products to our uh, potential couples who are hitting our website, they're seeing prints, they're seeing canvases, they're seeing uh, photo albums. We want them to purchase those things after the experience is, is done with us. Uh, but there's a few things that I think the uh, photography page needs to have. The first thing is what the experience is like. What is it like to work with us? You're getting a little bit of our why as well. Um, or why you should work with us and how we shoot. We're photographing for the long haul. Your photos are powerful reminders and we are focused on you. Um, so you're getting a little bit of that. We shoot for the family that loves the bride and groom and for the family that is yet to come. We're not just shooting for this couple, this generation. We're shooting for their children, their grandchildren and their grandchildren's children. This is a legacy thing. So you're getting all of that um, just up front on our page before we even show you any work. Uh, the next thing that it needs to have is, uh, you know, other than the philosophy, which we actually put on our about page, um, what the experience is like to work with us, but it also needs to have a signature work for us. Instead of showing like 50 of our best images, we've broken it up into six different weddings and you can click on Jared and Elizabeth and you can scroll and you can see a collection of images from their wedding. Uh, all the colors match, all of the, you know, the images flow nicely together rather than seeing a photo of 
uh, you know, Jared at his wedding, and then you see Phil and Michelle in Jamaica, and like the style is really different. We've kind of put them in individual collections. That way you can see what the story of their day was like. So that's just a suggestion. There's some other people that do it differently, and that's totally okay. Uh, this is just how we decided to do it. So you're seeing a bunch of our signature work, what we consider to be some of our best work. And then after that, if you keep scrolling down, you'll get some reviews. Reviews are very important. You want to at least include two to three reviews on your website. That way people know uh, that you're credible. And also it's a good idea to maybe invest in a free wedding wire account or the not and send couples to those web pages and review you on those web pages as well. So leave reviews on your site, uh, places we've been published online, the not, how we asked. And then one of the most important things, and this is a topic that you could go on for uh, for forever on, but we don't include our full pricing and our packaging breakdown uh, or even our starting price. We include the what the average dollar amount spent is, which is 5050 on full wedding day coverage. So we're including what the average is, and that means that we get more people reaching out for the lower average, but we also get um, we also end up reaching that average price point because they've already conditioned themselves in their head to say, oh, the average is $5,000. Sure, okay, so I won't be caught off guard when you know, the collection below that is not as good as the $5,000 collection. We're just gonna book the average price point. That's what everybody else does. Must be good, they must be booking for a reason. So that is, uh, that is the photography page. Let's take a look at Sarah's. She actually has two different photography uh, pages, it seems like. Details and information and our work. Let's look at details and information first. What you're seeing here is the investment in the wedding experience. Uh, you can see what you're getting at the starting price, starting at $4,000. Uh, and then you're going to see individual sessions like engagement sessions and senior sessions if she does that, whatever else. Uh, you're seeing her process, how it works. What is it like to, to work with her step by step? from inquiry all the way to uh, to delivery, to photo delivery. After that, you're seeing more uh, testimonials, more reviews from a few different people. Actually, a lot. Yeah, there's about four or five different people here. And then she is hoping that you just fill out the contact form at the bottom of her webpage. Let's go over to our work. Cool, so she is showing off a bunch of her work here. View wedding galleries, view engagement galleries, um, that sort of thing. So let's click on wedding galleries here and see what happens. Okay, so weddings, she has a lot of images here that you can scroll through and, and see some of her best work, and her work is so, so pretty. Um, and then below that, you're getting a little snapshot of what is it like to work with her again, um, and she's, she tells a story. She doesn't just write. She's telling a story. You've been dreaming of this day since you were young. Now you're beginning to panic and stress. There are so many decisions, plans, and arrangements to be made. Uh, so she is she is pretty much she is pretty much speaking right to her, her, uh, she's pretty much speaking right to her clients, her couple's pain points. She's speaking to their stresses, their anxieties, and she's telling them that she has a solution, that she is able to solve their problems if only they would book her. And that is such a smart thing to do because people are putting themselves in the perspective of maybe Sarah can fix my problems. I should book her. She, her work is beautiful. And it seems like she's going to take really good care of me on the wedding day, not just from a photography perspective, but just as a friend who I might need, uh, to support me. So that is, that is the web pages. Those are the web pages I'm going to show you. Other than that, I think every other website needs to have a contact page, which she does. Obviously, um, this is what ours looks like here. Contact us. Uh, ours is linked right into HoneyBook. I went over HoneyBook in a previous video. Um, so every time somebody fills this out, it sends us um, an inquiry right in HoneyBook. I don't have to import anything. It auto imports. Uh, and we also have at the top here, very important, is our email. So you can email us at hello at your in case in case uh, this inquiry form isn't working and you're trying to reach out to us, uh, you can always just email us manually, right? So the worst thing that could happen is having people uh, try and reach out to you, but your your contact form doesn't work. And all of a sudden you're missing out on you know, 10, 20, 30 inquiries and you're not booking anything and you're wondering why, it's because your inquiry form doesn't work. So as long as you have a uh, email that they can reach out to on your webpage, you are in, you're in good hands, I think. So same with Sarah, she has, um, contact form. She does not have a, uh, email on her 
contact page here, but she does have it down at the bottom, info at sarahcanningphoto.com. Uh, and the last thing that you need to have is a blog. I think blogging is super important. Uh, we blog every session. I think I mentioned this in another video. Uh, we blog every session because it's great for SEO and it is, uh, it's, it's helpful to just show all of your work, all of your work is in one place. She'll write a little bit about the couple and then she'll post a whole bunch of images from the wedding day and uh, she'll share this she'll share this link onto Facebook and Instagram and what ends up happening for both of us is that her clients, my clients will end up sharing their blog link and we'll drive a whole bunch of traffic to our web pages. Uh, and hopefully people who go there will keep us in mind for future events, future weddings. Um, it's just a good thing. So let's jump into the website critiques and we're gonna do this first on desktop and then I may do this a little bit on mobile. Mobile is incredibly important because the majority of people who are looking you up are going to be looking you up on a mobile web page. Um, first, we're going to look at Patrick Julian. Uh, Patrick is using uh, Wix right now, and you can tell because he has patrickjulianphoto.wixsite.com. Uh, so that's the first thing I would say, Pat, and uh, I would say if you can, try and get just patrickjulianphoto.com. See if you can get rid of Wix site. Um, it'll, it'll increase the professionalism. Other than that, you are actually following the structure here a little bit. So you have this statement image, which is great. I would see if possible, see if you can move these guys up in frame. I'm not sure how um, how much freedom Wix gives you to, to move images around. Uh, I should have mentioned that both Sarah and I are using a site called Show It. Show It is really awesome. I'll leave the link to uh, Show It in the description below in case you want to check that out. It's a fully customizable drag and drop um, website designer. No code is needed. I believe Wix is something similar to that. Uh, however, there's more limitations and restrictions with Wix. Uh, so Patrick Julian has the statement image, which is great. Scrolling down a little bit, he has a picture of him with uh, a, an about me section, which is awesome. Uh, where does this link take me here? Okay, it takes me back to the top. Cool. Okay, so let's scroll down. Okay, you're seeing some of his work. Cool, cool. All right, you're seeing some of what he shoots here. I would be more interested, Pat, if uh, if you, instead of showing uh, yourself shooting here and uh, the wedding engagement family and event photographer, if you included um, a testimonial or a review or something like that on your page. Um, and then you have a contact form down here at the bottom, which is awesome. I almost would be interested too to see what this looked like instead of being off center, if it could go like, right below their chins or something like that, um, or selecting even a wide shot. This is a beautiful image, man. This is almost like, this image honestly I think is better than this image in the header here. Um, this catches my attention a little bit more. I love the glowy light, the editing looks nice. Um, this catches my attention a lot more than, than this header image here. So I'd be interested to see what that looked like at the top. Um, but yeah, maybe, maybe see if you can get the contact form to come dead center and draw their attention in. That way they can fill that out. They might be more likely to fill it out if it's dead center than if it's off to the side. Not sure if that's true or not, but that's just my that's my first thought. Uh, and then you have social links here on the left. Uh, let's go over to uh, portfolio here. Okay, so this actually just scrolls me back down to your page. So you, pretty much your website is one long, is one long page. Um, so Pat, here's what I would suggest, I think if you moved your about in front of portfolio, the order that you want the uh, couples, the clients to go through is to see your homepage and then you want them to meet you because in this day and age, the only thing that is separating you from the next photographer is who you are. We're all using the same cameras, using the same gear, the same lenses, all editing in Adobe Lightroom. You know, we're all using the same exact gear. Um, so what's going to separate you from the rest of the competition is who you are and why you do it and how you do it, right? The experience you're offering is going to be the deciding factor. So I would suggest getting your about page to the front as, um, you know, right, right after the homepage, because if you can drive them from home to about and then have a call to action to lead them into your portfolio, that would be ideal. Uh, I think down here, um, just looking at it, I'm not sure what specifically you want to shoot. The images look great. Um, I know you showed me this one before. I love this image so much with the colored wall behind behind them. That looks beautiful. Uh, and this family portrait here is, is really cute too. Um, I would suggest, Pat, if you want to shoot um, one thing in particular, for us, we only shoot weddings. 
uh, and engagements. Uh, for Sarah, uh, you only saw weddings and engagements. So whatever you want to focus on, I would suggest only showing those on your homepage in your work because I come to your site and I'm not 100% sure what what does Pat shoot here? Does he shoot weddings? Is he shooting? Oh, he's shooting everything. Kids, engagements, weddings, horses, firefighters. Uh, corporate work, I'm not sure. So I, what I would suggest, Pat, is get rid of all of these images and maybe make a few different sections. If you want to have uh, you know, a single image with a link to engagements, a single image with a link to weddings, a single image with a link to um, family, I would maybe pick three things. Um, and then if you want them to do, if you want to do corporate work or something like that, then have a link somewhere else on your site uh, for corporate work. Um, or even honestly creating a separate site for corporate work or commercial work might be ideal. Uh, so that's just my suggestion. Um, I'm interested to see what this looks like on mobile. I'm going to imagine that you're going to be scrolling for a really long time um, and you're just going to be seeing a bunch of images that aren't standing out to you, right? When I see this, I'm not 100% sure where to look and it feels cluttered and a little bit chaotic. Um, the images look great, but I'm just... I'm just a little bit, I'm not sure, it's, it feels chaotic and hectic. I'm not sure where to look, where my eye is supposed to go. Um, so that's my suggestion there. I would also suggest shrinking your photo down a little bit, moving your uh, about copy over to the left, a little bit closer to your, uh, your, your photo of you. Um, and I think this photo is great. Actually, it tells me a lot about you. It tells me that you, uh, I haven't read this at all, by the way. Uh, it tells me that you like hiking, uh, that you're into fitness and exercise, you love the outdoors, uh, you love photography, I'd assume that you love taking landscape photos as well. Um, and then if I go over here, let's see if I can confirm that. Uh, da, 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 da. I enjoy hiking, camping with my four-year-old German Shepherd, playing hockey, traveling, just about anything. Yeah, so okay, so I was right. Yep, you like hiking and being outdoors and, and uh, being active. So that's great. Okay, let's look at your client albums here real quick. All right, so you have all, these are all the couples and clients that we saw down in your homepage. Clicking on John and Brooke. Okay, so this must be how you're delivering photos. Um, so you need a password to get in. Is that correct, Pat? If it is, comment on the video um, on YouTube here and let me know. Um, I would say get rid of this page altogether and use a separate gallery service such as Pass Plus or CloudSpot. Um, or Pixie set or something along those lines. That way Wix isn't in charge of your client's images. Um, and using a site like Pass Plus or, or CloudSpot might be better for, for you and your clients, giving them more options. I have never used Wix's delivery service. I didn't even know they had one, to be honest. But what that does is also it cleans up your site because um, this right now is a useless tab for any couple or client coming to your site looking to book you. They can't view these things and they get a little bit confused as to, oh, okay, well, this feels like a pointless pointless page. Uh, packages, okay, let's, let's click on packages here. I would get rid of the blue background and make it a white background. It just, it might look a little bit cleaner. Uh, and then the other, this is what we talked about a little bit earlier, but the other suggestion is um, maybe only having, I mean, I know you have starting prices here. That's true. Okay. You're not listing your entire packages out. Um, but this is where Sarah and I, I differ, right? Is she will list a starting price and I will list an average price. Um, that's completely up to you on how you want to do it. I think you're probably fine, um, with a starting wedding price, 950. Um, and then saying this includes a four hours online gallery, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and then also adding like, I, you know what, honestly, this is probably fine. Uh, it just does, it does feel a little bit overwhelming when I'm looking at family as well and seniors and portraits and surprise birthdays, vow renewals. There's a lot here. If, if they like your photography enough, to be honest, if they like your photography, they're going to reach out to you about other events. So I wouldn't worry about putting these things, uh, on your website. Um, they will reach out if they like your work. You ever heard like the, the term, um, you know, jack of all trades, master of none? That comes in uh, pretty heavy for wedding photography and photography in general. Uh, you're more likely to hire a specialist in one area or another uh, for photography because it is such, a, uh, such an intense art, uh, especially shooting weddings because uh, it does rely on a lot of education and skill and talent um, 
and you have to learn how to how to work on on those events so i'd be more likely to hire somebody who is a specialist as a wedding photographer rather than a family photographer senior photographer and somebody who also dabbles in weddings you know so just something to keep in mind going forward um, maybe start focusing on on one thing or another you can still showcase your family photos you can still showcase your senior and portrait portrait sessions but the place to do that i would say is the blog um, which I don't see on your page. So I would suggest, Pat, adding a blog page here. Um, let's look at your contact page. Okay, so this takes you back to the homepage, but that link doesn't even take you down to the contact form. Uh, if you can, Pat, add this contact form to its own separate page. I would suggest looking at some other photographer's sites and trying to model after my site or Sarah's site, uh, Vanessa Marie photography site, and seeing like, what are they all doing? I can leave a link to some photographers down in the description below of this video. And you guys can head there, check out their sites, and you can see that there's this pattern. They, these photographers are all successful for a reason, and part of it's because they figured out how their online home is supposed to function. Uh, so Pat, real quick, we're gonna pull up on your mobile site as well, uh, just, to see, just to see what your mobile site looks like. All right, mobile site. All right, so you can see that header image a lot better on your mobile site. However, I would still suggest getting Patrick Julian photography. Get that out of the image and get that up top where Facebook or Instagram is. Same with your homepage on the desktop. See if you can move Patrick Julian photography up next to home, maybe to the left of uh, your home navigation bar. Uh, and just get that out of the image because it might be, might be easier to... Uh, might be easier to read about me. Uh, this looks good. This looks good. Um, I would swap the about me and the image, put the, um, about me as your, your section headline. So it, so it kind of, so people know that they're transitioning into your about me section and capitalize the M in me as well. I think, um, this is just me nitpicking and then we're going to scroll. Yeah. So it's, it is a lot of scrolling. It is a lot of scrolling. So like I said, I would suggest, um, I would suggest separating these into categories, um, separate it into weddings, engagements, and families. That seems to be the thing that you're shooting most often. Uh, and then if you wanna have a section for corporate work, maybe at your footer, if you can add a footer at the bottom uh, and you can add corporate work or something else like that, that could be cool. Again here, uh, add a testimonial space. Maybe you can get some reviews or something like that. And I would just put that on like, a clean background because right now your website is really really image heavy um, and it is not necessarily uh, super super easy to look at your images like I said your images look great this horse photo is beautiful uh, this shot of the bride and groom is great um, things like this 30 here like yeah you're shooting birthdays but I'm not sure this doesn't mean anything to me especially like if I was a client it's just like okay he shot he shoots 30th birthday parties um, and then, okay, cool. Here you have the contact form in the center, um, which is awesome. Uh, it just takes a little bit to get down there because of all the images. So I would narrow that down to three different pictures, engagements, weddings, and families. And people can click on those links and they can go to individual galleries for engagements, individual galleries for weddings, individual galleries for family. Other than that, uh, your website's looking pretty good. I like the fonts you're using for the most part. I don't love the font for Patrick Julian, because uh, it, it is difficult to read. I would suggest that maybe go out and look at some high-end brands like Tiffany & Co, Hermes, Cartier, uh, Club Monaco, Zara. We, I just walked around the mall, so I, I've, I just looked at a whole bunch of, uh, even Apple, you know, look at a whole bunch of brands that are high-end brands and, and pay attention to the fonts that they're using, pay attention to the colors they're using, the spacing in between letters, and, and take note of what they're doing and see if you can replicate that. Uh, branding talk is a talk for a completely separate time, but cool. So that's that's a good starting spot for you, Pat, to to jump off of. Uh, let's go and look at Ryan and Courtney's website. We had them over not long ago for a consultation and mentioned to them that, yeah, they should maybe update their website. They came from Wix over to show it. Um, so I'm looking at their website now, and you can see again, they're following the same structure. They have they have a few different banner images, some statement images here. Scrolling down, you have a little get to meet you section where Ryan and Courtney uh, with a photo of them. They have links to their about page, their packages, and their galleries. And then they have a contact form on their website. Uh, and then they have some reviews down here, uh, which is awesome. 
Great. And then you can you can find them on Instagram and Facebook and Pinterest here. So they're following the structure really, really well. Uh, I think the structure of their homepage, uh, Ryan and Courtney, if you're listening, the structure of your homepage is really, really great. Um, my only qualm with this homepage is that um, the the fonts and the texts out are, um, I'm not sure where to go. They're all fighting. There's a lot of things fighting for my attention, right? I would, starting at the top, I think if you can shrink down RNC photography a little bit, because um, you can see that the tops of the letters here in T and the H's are, are almost touching the, uh, the URL link. Uh, so shrink that down a little bit. I would say also shrink down your navigation bar. People, people can read, uh, they can see, it'll be fine, trust me. Um, but shrink some of these things down because right now they're all fighting for my attention. Same with this section here. Um, it, it, is, it is fighting for my attention from this. And I would maybe, instead of centering it, have it left justified because it's a little bit easier to read. Um, I would then change, so glad you're here to um, move this. This sentence is great, just move it to the end of here. And instead of this being its own sentence, maybe add a button and it says, get to know us more or something like that, or meet us or something, something like that, that they can click on and go to your about page. Uh, I like this little section here. Uh, that's great. You're, you're obviously driving people to, to three different areas. Um, my only other question is that you have two different color blues, right? You have this, uh, soft dusty blue, and then you have this deeper dusty blue. They're both like this dusty blue color. I'm not sure which one I like more, to be honest. Um, but I would say as far as your branding goes, figure out, um, figure out a color palette. I would, I would specifically, I would specifically, um, note down like five or six different colors that you want to consistently use throughout your, your branding and your webpage. Um, that might be helpful. And you might've already done that. Um, just something to think about going forward. I also would be interested to know if, um, is this font Futura? I'd be interested to know what this looks like in all caps. It might have a higher end look than if it was all lowercase here. The other thing to consider is it is also really a really bold font. Um, so I'm wondering if you can look into um, a font called Montserrat. Uh, they have options from thin, light, regular, bold, extra bold. You can kind of pick and choose which version you want based on your needs. Adobe Caslon Pro is also a great one for headings because you have this serif font here. I think a serif font would look really, really nice um, for you guys for your, um, for your logo. Um, you can also look into maybe I would suggest getting a custom, it looks like you're going like the calligraphy route a little bit, the handwritten route. I would maybe reach out to a calligrapher and see if they can create a logo for you. Uh, I think that would be really, really beautiful. Um, R and C, you know, and they can create a little icon that says R and C. That, that might be really cool. Other than that, we're looking at the footer. Uh, R and C photography 1027 at gmail.com. If you can, I would look into G Suite and see if you can get info at R and C photography or hello at RC photography. Um, it's always a little bit nicer when you have a custom branded domain at the end. Uh, makes you feel a little bit more professional. Let's look at your about page here accidentally in love love it that means that i'm going to read your story here and i'm going to find out how you accidentally fell in love love that little tease um i would suggest i love that you have a, a wedding image of you guys here this might be the same one i saw on the home page it is so i would suggest getting um a different image here and honestly because you're using show it you have options you can change your view to be uh you know to kind of slide in and out so you can change this image um automatically right it can kind of swipe uh automatically and change and it'd be nice to see a few different photos of you throughout your relationship i i like ryan and he is really far away i would like to see what he looks like a little bit closer up guys maybe we need to do some head uh, some additional headshots for you guys and uh get you guys over and we can take some updated headshots for you because that might be nice to see you guys up close and maybe a photo of the two of you together could go up in here as well. Uh, the only, my only concern about the wedding images is that somebody might might be confused that this isn't you guys and it's actually another another couple or a wedding that you photographed. I know it sounds silly because you're talking about yourself here, but it you know people they might they might actually think that. So um, just a thought. I love how much copy you have here. Again, left justify each of these. 
it is more difficult to read when things are centered. Uh, so left justify these and see if you can shrink the font down um, and uh, look again, look into Montserrat font and see if uh, see if you can use that and how that how that might look. Uh, click here for more information. This is great. You're giving me a call to action at the bottom of your page telling me you want to go to the want me to go to the next page. All right. So these are your packages here. Uh, I'm going to be honest. This is a little bit difficult to read. This this text here is difficult to read. Again, left justify it. Uh, this is what you offer, obviously. Um, honestly, I would get rid of this image altogether um, because, it, again, it is difficult to read. Uh, click below for more information. This button doesn't work. Uh, just as a heads up, get rid of this image, the image of the shoes and just have these four, these four images here. I'll click on these in just a moment. Cup of coffee. I know this is you saying, let's have a cup of coffee. I would find a different way to say it though. There's probably another way out there to say, let's get coffee. Honestly, let's get coffee. Sounds good. That, that honestly, that tells me exactly what this is. Cup of coffee feels out of nowhere. So let's maybe change that to Let's grab coffee. We can't wait to learn about your wedding or event. Let us treat you at Starbucks to discuss all the little details. That's great. You're saying your coffee's on you. That's awesome. You're investing in them, even if it's only a $5 cup of coffee. Uh, contact here, and you have the review section here as well. It's great that you've continued that. Uh, let's click on package one. All right, awesome. Um, again, I think that this is a little bit, uh, my attention is it's not knowing where to look, right? Because I have one behind $3,000 average investment. Um, this seems, a, it just seems a little chaotic. So I would say if you can get rid of the image behind here altogether and just have this on a plain white background or something along those lines, keep it really simple. You don't want people to feel overwhelmed or chaotic, especially when they're looking at prices, okay? Uh, let's see what package two does. Okay, so it just creates another canvas. Um, I know because you're use, using Show It as well that I imagine if you were to if you were able to click package two that it could actually replace this canvas altogether. I think that's possible. The other thing to do is to add an arrow on the the right and the left here, uh, where you can have them jump to package two, package three. And I'm imagining if I keep clicking these right that it keeps it keeps uh that it keeps creating new, yeah, new packages, new windows. Um, I'd be interested to see if you can consolidate these down into a single canvas view. Um, I think that will look a lot cleaner. The other thing to think about is maybe only putting your starting price or your average price point on your website and sending them a full on pricing guide after they inquire with you and email you. Uh, that way, not everybody is seeing your pricing and uh, you are only getting the people who are really, really interested in you contacting you about their wedding. Other than that, I think the site looks great. It's definitely an upgrade from from where you guys were. Uh, let's look at uh, let's look at galleries here. Great, what you're doing? You're you've separated these into collections. Uh, it's funny you guys are shooting Brandon and uh, Brandon and Tyler. So awesome that these guys are. I went to high school with Brandon, so this is this is cool. Images look great, guys. I love that you're separating these into collections rather than uh, just a whole bunch of random images. Uh, out front that don't fit together because the weddings and the lighting and the style are completely different. Your navigation bar is perfect. Um, uh, and you guys just launched this. So there is only one blog here. Um, and there's nothing quite written yet. So I would go, I know you guys are going to do this already, but you should go in and update that and change the uncategorized to, uh, uh, maybe make a personal section or something like that. That might be nice. And then your contact page. Great. Perfect. No, guys, I think your website looks great. Uh, the biggest things I would change are um, the fonts, the text, shrink everything down because um, my attention is going to a whole bunch of things. My eye doesn't know where to look. Um, so that's it. You're, both Patrick and Ryan and Courtney, your websites are going to develop as your brand grows. So you should seriously, if I could find some images from our first website, um, Seriously, you guys are in good shape compared to us. Like you guys really are in good shape. The way we kind of built our websites, we would change this our we would change our websites like every year, every 6 months, whatever. And I would just keep pulling um inspiration from other photographers I was following, you know, almost copying certain sections all together from their web pages because it just looked so good. I knew I wasn't going to come up with anything better. Uh and so I would steal little bits from 
other photographers' web pages and kind of merge them into my own web page. Uh, and so I would suggest, honestly, that's not a bad idea. Uh, obviously, don't copy their text. Um, don't just steal it. You know, make it your own. Um, there's a quote by um, Pablo Picasso that says, "Good artists copy, great artists steal." Uh, there's nothing new under the sun, right? Like everything is pretty much repeating. Design is. Uh, isn't anything new. It's just a bunch of inspiration merged together to create what might seem as something that's new. Honestly, Show It is the very best place to create a customized website. They are not paying me to say this, although I wish they would. That would be really, really cool. Show It is, like I said, a customizable drag and drop uh, website designer. No code is needed. And uh, I'll leave the link to that in the description below if you want to check them out. Uh, another great place to go is Squarespace. They have award-winning designer templates. Um, you can check them out. They're not paying me either. Again, I wish they would. So check out Squarespace or Show It. Both great places to start. And you can make a website um, pretty quick, pretty easy. Uh, Show It also has some really great templates from website designers. Uh, and they're really, really simple to customize as well. So this was a mix of website and branding talk. I know it, it's long. This is a long episode. Uh, we're coming on 45 minutes. So if you've even made it this far, congrats. Um, I would love to talk about branding more in the future. So please leave your questions about branding below. I would love to to know what questions you have about that. Uh, I would also love to check out your website. So leave your website in the link below and uh, I can give you a quick little um, review on what I think you should change. Maybe I'll, I'll reply in those comments. Uh, I'll reply to those comments with like one or two things that I think you can do to update your website. That might be cool. So uh, guys, thank you for watching, listening. I hope I didn't go too hard on you guys, Patrick and uh, Ryan and Courtney. I think your websites will look great. They just need a little bit more love. Um, and you guys will have people, um, you know, inquiring left and right after, after you make some changes. Uh, so that's awesome. Thank you guys again for sending in those websites. Super helpful. Um, thanks for making this video possible because I wasn't sure what I was going to do without some websites to critique and your approval to critique them uh, on YouTube. So thank you guys. Uh, guys, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, I would love for you to do so. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, uh, and maybe share this with a friend who might find it helpful. And I will see you guys in the next video.